Welcome to One Light, One Love, where today we will be discussing differences and similarities between different faiths with five representatives from different faiths. Hi, my name is Joanne Kanai Rosalia. I'm with uh, the Roman Catholic faith, the faith Christianity, and um, I've my parents were Catholic, their parents were Catholic, um, so we, my three brothers and I are Catholic. We went to Catholic school, and um, I also am a catechist at our church to teach Catholicism to students um, up through eighth grade. So I um, am happy to be here today. I'm thrilled to be here and to be part of this great community. So, thank you. Uh, I'm Jessica Rincourt. I'm from the Sikh faith, and I belong to a Sikh family. Uh, from my parents, grandparents, we all are Sikhs. We follow the faith. I'm a follower, and uh, I try to do as much as uh, seva, as we call it, a service in my Gurdwara, in my community, as, is, uh, as I'm blessed with the God's grace to do that. Other than that, I'm just a very humble person, and I'm really grateful to be here and have the opportunity to share our thoughts and see what we can share with each other to live a life of peace and brotherhood. And uh, greetings, the way we greet each other when we meet, it is Vaiguchi Ka Khalsa, Vaiguchi Ki Fateh. And another common short one people also do is Satchi Akal. Thank you. Shalom Aleichem, which means peace be upon you. My name is Rachel Gurevitz. I'm a rabbi at Congregation B'nai Shalom in the town of Westboro, uh, part of the Jewish faith. Um, my particular uh, denomination is Reform Judaism, and uh, I grew up in London and came to the United States about 16 years ago, and delighted to be with you all this afternoon. Namaste and Hariyo. My name is Sujit Sudhaman. I'm a practitioner of uh, the Hindu uh, religion. I'm born and brought up in India and uh, moved to the U.S. a couple of years ago to Massachusetts. So I had a tenure of, in the U.S. a couple of decades ago, but came back again recently. Uh, all my childhood, I've been having a very uh, traditional Hindu outlook and upbringing. And uh, uh, recently, when I moved to the uh, U.S. Uh, in Massachusetts, I got associated with the Chinmaya Mission which is basically another movement to kind of propagate uh, Hindu culture and Hindu concepts to the youth, basically, children and the youth. So from like uh, pre-kindergarten all the way till 12th standard, 12th grade. And uh, that is the forum that I'm kind of representing today and uh, from a point of view of Hinduism. Thanks, Rutia. Thank you. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Peace be upon you. Uh, my name is Rashid Sheikh. I live in Shrewsbury, and um, uh, I am interested in finding commonalities between different religions. Uh, I was born, I am born Muslim. Uh, however, I like to find the commonalities among different faiths and getting the best out of the humanity and helping the humanity is kind of my motto. So with that motto, I have developed uh, an organization called Humanity Bridge Foundation, where we try to bridge between different religions and cultures. So the hope is to kind of provide a bridge between East and West, so people get to know each other and they really get the best out of humanity. And I'm really happy to be here. Uh, thank you so much. And I am Simran Khalsa. I have been uh, raised as a second generation Sikh to parents who converted to Sikhism. Um, I live in a community in Millis and I am your host today. So what names of God are you aware of in other faiths other than your own? Yeah, I'll take that one. So for example, I've, you know, although I was kind of had an Indian up, Hindu upbringing, I kind of studied in a convent school uh, back in India and uh, I, some of the things which I imbibed was, you know, there's a name called Jehovah basically for God uh, in the Christianity and uh, Jewish faith, basically. And I think uh, Allah, of course, you know, Allahu Akbar is something that we learn from the Islamic faith. So these two I'm aware of. 
in sikhism i know it's primarily related to uh, uh, guru nanak ji uh, i'm not aware of a name of god per se in that particular faith anybody else who? may i add something in here yeah. so um once again since i like to find commonalities and i like to get into the roots of the words so jehovah is really when you pronounce in different languages is j is also pronounced as yah so it's also mean yahova and yahova also mean you know ya means a means basically you're calling oh like you say oh god and hova is he is who oh, okay. so it like um like in you know in jewish judaism you say you know i i, I don't know the right pronunciation but it's e l o h m yeah so i know they especially our jews friends respect the name of god so much that they sometimes don't even want to say it maybe you can explain shed a little more light on it but there is a arabic word ilah where the allah came and if you really look at the root of allah it also start from ilah and hebrew which is also called ibrani mm. in arabic and arabic uh, are actually arabic was driven from hebrew and in all ibrahimic religion if you look at the root of the word is actually is ila or hova or allah mm. all means the personal name personal name of god the one who has created everything but has nobody has created him mm. so i think that's really all commonalities in these in these in these languages so i just wanted to kind of clarify that So in terms of my familiarity with other names of God, I think um certainly Allah, uh and when I think about Christianity, uh I think you know God but also uh for those who believe in the Trinity, speaking about God and uh the Son of God, Christ and also the Holy Spirit, uh, all different aspects and I think that's one of the things we'll probably get into in our conversation is how these different names um reflect different aspects of god that's certainly true within hinduism as well um just one point of clarification so uh jews do not use the word jehovah um uh the four hebrew letters uh, most commonly used in god's name is yud hey vav hey um and those letters uh there is a tradition of we shouldn't pronounce god's name that name is actually unpronounceable because the way it's written is without vowels and if you cannot uh if you without putting some kind of vowel sound to it even the a short vowel sound like an uh you cannot make a sound with those four letters uh one of my teachers rabbi arthur waskal speaks of the nearest you could come would be this kind of sound which is basically the sound of breathing um which is a beautiful way to interpret it um but the in the bible uh god says to moses i am that i am i will be that which will i i that i will be and yud he vav he those four letters actually contain within them um the verb to be it's a sort of combination of past present and future and so it's uh, we often talk about god as being uh, eternal mm-hmm. because that would be you know was is and will ever be Uh, so that's embedded in the meaning of the name as well um but usually in our prayers in our liturgy when we see those four letters we actually say a completely different name uh most commonly adonai which actually literally means my lord um although in english we move to more uh ge- gender inclusive ways of describing the word such as the eternal uh but that we avoid actually pronouncing the name at all uh what i'm familiar with the names like they said allah is familiar for the hinduism faith i believe is ishwar and his forms of brahma shiva and vishnu ji and of course the jews i don't know but i think i find it difficult to pronounce it she said but i i am aware of the letters that are there and for the christian faith uh, i know it is the holy father the jesus and the holy spirit and as far as uh, from the sikh faith i'd just like to clarify uh we are very liberal with the name of god we don't have any one name of god but at the same time 
we have a plurality of names for God because we believe as a Sikh faith that God is one. And in his oneness, he has created the whole universe. And in that creation, it is oneness. And that oneness is so vast that you cannot contain it in a name. So just to address him, like it is actually a name that is given by the human beings and his the traits that God has are not anything that are related to the human beings. So therefore, the name that we have given to him and that names are whatever the saints, the, uh, the bhagas that we've got, as they realized him, as they actually got enlightened and had direct communication with God, they expressed their words, you know, or they expressed a name for him that way. So we are very liberal. We have the, in our composition, which is the Holy Guru Granth Sahib, we have the teachings of our six first gurus of 15 bhagats. And these are from different faiths. They are from Hinduism, they are from Muslims. So what Guru Nanak Deji was saying to say that he was bringing a unity. He didn't want to have any diversity. He was combining, you may say Allah, you may say Ram, you may say Vaiguru, you may say Guru, you may say Satguru. It doesn't matter. As long as you are aware of the name that you're saying. So our faith doesn't believe that you believe in God. It's not the question of believing. It's a question of knowing him, of feeling him, of loving him. So when you have that relation with God, we don't have any middlemen. We just have direct communication with our God. Everybody has their own personal view on it. But the general consequence that he's there, like the oneness in him is in this room. At the minute, he's in you, he's in me, he's in all of you. And we have to lift that veil of duality that it is I. Once that ego, I am, is lifted, you see God in everybody. So most of the time which people generally address, maybe Akal Purukh, that's the timeless one, is not the timeless uh, being or the masculine one, it's the timeless being. You know, he's in everybody, it's, uh, death doesn't come to him, he's here now, he will be, he was always there, he's there at the moment, and he will be the next. So that is a timeless, like, how do you associate time? It's with change. But as one moment goes to the next, you really can't find the change, you know. When the moment, the previous one slipped and the current one came, you are there now in the moment. So that is his presence, that when we feel it, we say, some people call it Karpuruk, even Vaiguru is there. Vaiguru is again, is a, wa means wonder. You are just wondering. It's such a mantra that you can't express in words. You're just, it's all, you know, at the historian, at the people, at everything that's there. And Guru is the one that eliminates the darkness. Guru is darkness and your Ru is light. So the one that eliminates darkness and gets you into light. But what does light mean here? By light, it means that you're aware of his presence. The very awareness that he's there, he is like, I would say, in me. And I see that in you and in people around me, then that oneness is there the veil of duality is lifted and we say why grow or we say even a card for it. Thank you. It's just amazing to feel the oneness just in talking and listening. Um, Allah and Yahweh and God and uh, God our Father, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity in Christianity, the God, the I believe in God, uh, so it's the in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Son being Jesus Christ, the uh, Holy Spirit being water, and um, water being the beginning, um, and baptism into, the, um, into Christianity, into the Roman Catholic Church is about water, anointing with water and oils. Um, so God is one, and... Um, the creed for um, Christianity, for, for the Roman Catholic Church is, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. And that is the core belief, is that God made everything. Um, and God is, is part of us. And um, uh, Moses, with the Ten Commandments, one of the com Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And um, that's something that is um, the name God, the 
however referenced is something that should not be taken in vain. And um, you know, what hits close to home for a lot of um, kids and parents is the reality of that. And when people say, oh my God, and Jesus Christ, and that that is, you know, it, it, we don't believe that that is, you know, that's, a ten, that's one of the commandments, that that is taking the name of the Lord in vain. And, um, you know, it takes on meaning um, when that reality, you know, of the day-to-day -day and what we believe in and how simple yet complex it can be. So, um, if I may add, actually, um, from the point of view of Islam, um, there's not one name of God. Actually, there is, uh, first of all, if we can understand all the attributes of God, then we can bound him in our mind, and God is boundless. So we cannot really, you know, give all the attributes of, because we don't know all the attributes. However, there are 99 common names of God in Islam. And those common names are with the attributes of God. That, you know, Allah is more like a personal name. Uh, but then there are uh, names, what we call sifati name or attributive names. So, uh, in like, you know, when we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, we begin with the name of God, who is Rahman, most merciful, and Rahim, most kind, and the one who created mercy. Okay. And likewise, there are, you know, other names like Sami and Basir. So, for example, my son's name is Sami, and I gave him the name from God's name. Now, we are all Sami. Sami means the one who is a listener, the one who has ears, who listen. So God, again, in my opinion, God has created the whole humanity on his attributes and gave very, very, very minute of his own attribute to the whole universe. And so if we listen, we listen because of his given attribute, whereas he is Sami, he, he is the ultimate Sami. Whereas we are a very, very small, it's not our own, it's borrowed, right? And like Basir means the one who sees. Now God sees and, you know, he can see, you know, through many, 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 many whales. That there is one saying that, you know, if there is a very small ant underneath the uh, big, uh, uh, like a mountain, and it's a dark night, and, you know, God still see and listen to that and, and provides. And that's the reason one common name of God, which is very common in Sikh and Islam, is Rabb. Rabb means sustainer. We say Rabbul Alameen, the sustainer of the universe, or universes. It's a plural. So God has many, many names because of his attributes. I can go on and on, but I just want to clarify there are many names of God in each religion. But at the end of the day, we are talking about the creator. That's what we are talking about. And then the rest is all his creation. And that creation comes in different forms. And that creation has enlightenment from God in different ways. So I, I believe that it's like a, we are in a magnet. And closer, or if more closer our, our, our magnet is, our heart is, the magnetic flux is better. And then we can connect with God much more quickly. So more, you know, so it's at the end of the day is the creator we are all talking about. And then he sends his creation to connect with us. Uh, i like to add to a follow up with this. He's right. They have 99 names in uh, Muslim faith. But as far as uh, in our uh, religion, Sikh faith, they say, Guru Gobind Singh Ji says, you have no name. And yet they say there's so many names that I just can't count them. So therefore, I can only count them according to the your deeds that are there, which come kindness, compassion, other things. And yet, that is only, he says, God, if you bless me with the grace of even expressing that. There's so much that Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, I cannot find the end of you. I cannot express you in any name. It is, I mean, so vast. All that I can do is I can feel you, I can love you. So our faith actually is of love for God. It is a faith of love. 